Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. These are the words of perhaps the most famous opening lines of narration in all of television history. And in reality, the race to make humankind a multi-planetary species is being led by SpaceX. Elon Musk was the first to envision that the next step to human progress was to conquer the stars and colonize another planet. Elon Musk chose the red planet, Mars, as the first target for human colonization. With the upcoming first Starship orbital flight, he's getting closer and closer to what some considered a pipe dream. However, in order to make human life multiplanetary, things become much more complicated. They must first figure out how to support life on Starship. Life support in space has never been easy, especially keeping hundreds of people alive and healthy on Starship. How will they handle it? Let's bore deeper into how SpaceX's new-gen Starship will handle life support. While the Starship is designed to send the first humans to Mars on another daring mission, creative expression has also emerged early as a possibility thanks to Starship's large, pressurized cabin space. Musk described the space edifice as measuring more than 1,000 cubic meters, larger than an Airbus A380 that seats between four and 600 people. Musk has explained each cabin could comfortably hold two or three people, and zero gravity allows the designers to use every surface more. Besides, on Starship's official user guide, SpaceX mentions that the crew configuration of Starship includes large common areas, centralized storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. To better visualize, let's take a look at the concept for the interior layout of Starship made by the famous Canadian designer engineer Mikel Lamontagne. The design divides the living space into seven decks labeled A to G from the bottom up. There's two openings between decks, offset slightly from one deck to the next to reduce risk of accidents related to trying to fly through multiple decks while in zero gravity. There's removable rails around the openings to prevent accidental falls while on Earth or Mars. All decks have a 2.2 meter high living space except deck G, which is a full 2.16 meters high. The blue bars in some areas are examples of hand and footholds used on the International Space Station. The floors are shown with hexagonal tiles to indicate a system that would allow wall partitions and other systems to be attached or removed to meet the taste and needs of passengers. Deck A has the gym, an external airlock, some storage space, and a couple of toilets. ISS found a need for two plus hours of exercise per day to avoid bone and muscle loss. Multiplied by 100 people, that requires 10 exercise machines. Note that several of those are mounted on the wall. Making full use of walls and ceilings for living space is a theme of this design since there's no down in zero G. The airlock allows access to the outside of the ship during flight in case of a need to make inspections or minor repairs and to support landing in places without pre-existing ground infrastructure. Decks B and C have passenger cabins and toilets, 25 rooms on each deck with two people per room. Walls would be removed during launch and landing. Seats are positioned radially for acceleration and parallel during EDL. The position orientation of the seats can be changed automatically with enough range of motion to account for the ship's direction vector change during EDL. After launch, the seats can be removed, disassembled, and stowed in the area of Deck A. Carry-ons will be stored in the ceiling of each cabin. Passengers sleep on the walls in simple sleeping bags, just like ISS, to ease entry and exit while one or the other is asleep. Passengers will sleep in two shifts to make more room available per person on non-cabin decks when people are awake. Deck D is the solar storm shelter and a single toilet. The inside of the storm shelter consists of a 12 and a half centimeter layer of water packaged in plastic containers that can be removed. Water can be removed during the flight and used for cooking and replaced after processing. The ship will have a closed cycle water purification system, very similar to ISS, including urine. Some of the interior storage layers will also be available for food. During a solar storm, all 100 passengers would need to be in this area. By nature of position, the shelter would also provide some additional shielding for the cabin areas. 
Decks F and G are lounge areas. Large video monitors would be available in the area for shared movie viewing and the like. Everyone is also assumed to have their own personal laptop. Both decks have a view through the large window on the leeward side of the ship. Beyond the living quarters, SpaceX has been looking into offering entertainment in the common area, which could be needed in the three to six month trip to Mars. One idea suggested by Musk in a concept image is to hold zero gravity concertos. Musk explained that Starship would be capable of supporting such arrangements. There will be a common area in the forward section with a big window like this. It will be a lot heavier than steel, but not dangerous. Consider astronauts on the moon have a very thin windowed helmet. They were fine. Well, the design is great, but if SpaceX wants to put people on Starship for an extended period of time, things are getting a lot more complicated. Here we want to cover the life support system needed to keep people alive and healthy while on Starship. A life support system is all the things needed for humans to fundamentally survive here on Earth. The most basic necessity is atmosphere. Life support systems must supply the right mixture of gases for people to breathe and remove carbon dioxide from the air before it builds up to a dangerous amount. The right temperatures and atmospheric pressure must be maintained. Astronauts need drinking water, along with a place for wastewater to go. Musk has addressed life support and human health in his Starship talks before, but only briefly. In a presentation, the SpaceX CEO was asked twice about the types of life support systems that Starship would use. I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself, Musk said. The life support system is pretty straightforward. Despite that, life support is more complicated than we think when it comes to hundreds if not thousands of individual aspects and small items connecting to keep all the crew alive. The average human consumes 660 liters of oxygen a day, meaning that Starship would need a massive amount of onboard oxygen or a large generator to support hundreds of people living aboard the craft for weeks or months. Meanwhile, both oxygen and water can be supplied in finite containers on a trip to orbit, just enough to get people to their long-term destination. On the ISS, luckily, where people live for months at a time, a regenerative system's in place for things like oxygen and water, meaning they're recycled in a closed-loop system. Urine and sweat are recycled and turned back into drinking water, while some of the water is split apart into oxygen and hydrogen in a process known as electrolysis so people can breathe. What's more, by combining the newly gained hydrogen with the carbon dioxide given off by every crewmate, astronauts can create water and methane. As we should know, this water can be purified and used for human consumption, with the methane potentially going towards Starship's methane supply. Musk once said that the life support system on Starship would be regenerative, but life support systems tend to be heavy and complex, changing how the vehicle would operate. Besides that, figuring out how to keep people safe in emergency situations is also key. So there's quite a bit more work that has to go into place. That's all for today's video, and if you enjoyed it, leave us with a like. Consider subscribing, that way you'll get all the content. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow.